Hello and welcome to Cancer Research Simplified. I am Aigun Shahin and thank you for being here. I wanted to shoot this video today on the outside and this is the Labor Day weekend. And before we go further into fall, this is probably the last couple of days that I will be able to shoot outside. So it's a beautiful weather today. And uh, so I'm here at the Prospect Hill Park at the Prospect Hill Castle, Prospect Hill Monument, uh, which is here in Union Square in Somerville, Massachusetts, where uh, our organization, Cancer Resource Simplified, is located. Um, actually, you will see that the Prospect Hill Castle is right here. It's a monument, and it's been said that, a little bit of history here, that the first American flag the, called the Grand Union. That's why the name Union Square was also given the, as Union Square. So the Grand Union flag was raised uh, by George Washington here in, on 1st of January 1776. So it's very interesting and it's very uh, amazing for me to be here actually that our, our organization is also located here. So it's the first time I'm able to come here and shoot this video so I'm very excited. So back into why I'm shooting this video. And the reason for that is we had recently an amazing fundraiser. We have every month a fundraiser event. It's a sports and recreation event aiming to get everyone out of the house and join our fun activities while I'm doing spawns and activities so that they can get out and be healthy, have a healthy life and meet wonderful people. And this also aims to bring uh, general public as well as cancer researchers and everyone from any field to our uh, events. And so we are having them get connected there. So we had recently uh, a kayaking event. It was on the Charles River and it was fantastic. We had so many people participating. You can find on our web side actually as well as on our Facebook page the album of this fantastic event so I will highly encourage you to check that out it's very fantastic so every month we have the, as I said these sports and recreation events but we have always a fun cancer quiz game it is unique to our organization called CRS cancer quiz game and we had this on our biking event in our hiking event and our climbing event, as well as a recent kayaking event. Actually, what I'm doing today is to give the answers of the questions that we ask so that everybody can learn. Particularly, we ask uh, several uh, food questions, food-related questions, and it was very interesting to see that pretty much everybody <laughs> participating answer these questions wrong so I think this is a general understanding of what food does to the body and so our goal is to uh, hopefully with these answers to give a clarification on these particular the food answers so here we go so the question was uh, is it true or false that dairy food makes you fat Actually, I was very surprised that most of the people answered this as yes. No, it is not. It's incorrect. Dairy food does not make you fat. The other question was, a salad isn't always the healthiest choice. And some people said yes, some people said no. Actually, it's true that not every salad has been offered and the restaurants is actually a healthy choice. Because uh, when you think of the toppings that they usually put on top of the salad, you will see it's usually fatty and, um, and it has a lot of calories. So most of uh, these type of salads uh, would be categorized as not healthy. Vegetarians are healthier. Uh, some people said yes, it's correct. Actually, that's, I'm very surprised about that. Vegetarians are not healthier than people who are not vegetarians. 
we have to understand that we are omnivores, right? And when you look at in our educational programs on our website, and we post it all everywhere on social media, you will see what type of foods and the balance and uh, what is healthy, what choices are healthier. We are explaining everything there, so definitely check that out. Sugar and fruit is bad for you. Some people said yes, yeah, some people said no. It's not correct that the sugar in fruit is bad for you. The natural sugars that we have in our fruits, those are healthier than any other sugar supplements. All breakfast cereals are good for you. This is not correct. Because when we look at some cereals out there, those are containing so much sugar that is actually insane to even think that these type of cereals are healthy. Then coming back into the questions of for breast cancer. So we had said that there are modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors for breast cancer. I had list several questions and the participants should have answered whether or not these risk factors are modifiable or non-modifiable. So uh, family history of breast cancer, meaning that mother or two immediate family members affected by breast cancer, is it modifiable or non-modifiable? Obviously, it is non-modifiable risk factor for breast cancer. So the family history of breast cancer is a non-modifiable risk factor. Then drinking alcohol. Breast cancer is one of the cancer types that's highly related to the uh, lifestyle. That's why we are creating all these educational programs because breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, those cancer types are highly related to lifestyle. So uh, again, drinking alcohol is a modifiable breast cancer risk. Confirmed BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations. Those are clearly non-modifiable risk factors for breast cancer. Lack of exercise. Obviously, it is a modifiable risk factor for breast cancer and that's why we do have all these sports and recreation events every month, which means that you can change this factor. If you're doing less exercise, absolutely get out while the weather is still nice and do your exercises. Not having children versus women giving birth at age of 35 and younger. That is also listed under modifiable breast cancer risk factors. So uh, when you listen to our educational video on early detection methods for breast cancer, we have also mentioned that there, you should definitely check that out as well. Postmenopausal hormone use, estrogen plus progestin, current or recent use for five or more years. That is also a modifiable risk factor for breast cancer. Benign breast disease proliferative, which means fast-growing benign breast disease. This is a non-modifiable breast cancer risk. So then we are going into ovarian cancer and cervical cancer. We have made a six educational series of ovarian cancer and that includes from the symptoms all the way into the treatment so definitely check those videos out as well one question is cervical cancer originates from the cervix and ovarian cancer originates from the ovaries clearly this is correct ovarian cancer and cervical cancers often be confused with each other so it is correct that cervical cancer originates from the cervix and ovarian cancer originates from the ovaries and where are those located is on our videos definitely check those videos out cervical cancer can be detected at early stage ovarian cancer cannot this is also correct because uh, when you look at ovarian cancer series we have mentioned that unfortunately ovarian cancer once is detected it is already in the late stage there are certain methods for detecting cervical cancer in early stage, but for ovarian cancer, unfortunately, the such uh, test type is not there yet. And that's why many uh, cancer researchers are trying to identify an early detection method for ovarian cancer. That question was correct. 
and the only way to detect ovarian cancer is through biopsy. That is also correct because, as I said, when ovarian cancer is being detected, it's pretty much always on the late stage of the cancer. It is uh, being detected through biopsy. That is correct. We are the organization that actually addresses what you can do on a day-to-day basis to protect yourself from getting cancer. Many products out there containing dangerous or harsh chemicals. That's why we do have in our events uh, face paintings for children, lead-free, harsh chemical-free, paraben-free face painting because we believe that every day products that you're using are so important and plays an important role in cancer prevention. This question was regarding antiperspirants and says which of the following chemicals is the active ingredient in antiperspirants that is linked to cancer? The answer for this was aluminium zirconium tetrachloridex glee. In every deodorant you will find this ingredient. It's usually it's like about 23 or sometimes 26 percent. That's a high amount of aluminium. When you look into our deodorant video, I've explained aluminium uh, as well as parabens in those videos, so definitely check that out. Which of the following ingredients are in food, makeup, mascara, lipstick, deodorants, moisturizers, or it's pretty much in everything we daily use and is known to penetrate into skin and is linked to cancer. And the answer for this is paraben. Paraben, you can find it in pretty much everything you use and that is penetrating into your skin. It's linked to cancer. So uh, definitely check the video out again on deodorants and you will see in detail explanation on parabens and aluminium in the deodorants um, and why is it linked to cancer. We have mentioned it very broadly there. Then the last question was, and that's a question regarding our organization. As you know, we are an international cancer organization. We are US-based, but we are international. We are providing our educational programs in multiple languages and we have reached over 120 countries around the globe and in all 50 states of the United States. So people are watching us from all over the globe. Um, so it's very exciting. So we are providing our educational programs, multi-languages, and this question was in how many languages? And the correct answer is six. English, German, Turkish, Afrikaans, Spanish, and Italian. So this is wonderful. So this is great. We have the answers here from and we also posted um, the winners. I'm going to mention them here. So I want to tell you, so we had a total of 18 questions. One person got nine. Then we have two people got uh, 11 out of 18. And then we got two people got 12 correct out of 18. Then we have two people got 13 correct out of 18. Then we have, let me see here, four people got 14 correct out of 18. Then we have a lot of, let me see how many, we have a lot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people answering 15 correct out of 18. Then we have four people answering 16 correct out of 18. And we have a grand winner at 17 correct out of 18. It's so exciting. It's just so great that these, um, there's so many great correct answers. So the grand prize winner uh, is, I'm going to explain, she is Erin Mukia, uh, who uh, won from us a grand prize. It's a $25 gift card from Live Alive Organic Cafe here in Boston, Massachusetts. 
Then we have the, uh, we also wanted to give to the four people who have 16 out of 18, correct? And those are Delphine, Gabay, Berta Ziu, Zara Muragdian, Florian Koki. And those have won from us our very special Cancerisa Simplified SP15 lip balm. So congratulations, thank you so much for joining and coming to our uh, events and I look forward to see you at our next event. Don't forget that we have social media presence on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, Flickr, Google Plus and LinkedIn and obviously we have our website. So we are posting daily our educational cancer programs and we do have our cancer TV show Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern time on channel 3. Definitely check it out. If you miss those, you can also reach those episodes on our website. We have an upcoming event, very exciting. Uh, we will be here also in Somerville on September 7 on Summer Streets Fair. Definitely check out our booth are there. And I want to say now, save the date for October 4th. Something very special is coming up here. You will love it. It's an event. And I don't want to tell you in too much in detail what it is, but trust me, it will be open to the public. It will be free. So mark your calendars. It's going to be on October 4th from 10 a.m to 2 p.m. All right? And don't forget to donate on our website and join our uh, events. We are only one and a half years old, but we already got through the great nonprofits an award that we are the top rated nonprofit organization 2014. So it's very exciting. So wonderful support from all of our audiences around the globe. They are asking questions and communicating with us. This is so exciting and uh, researchers here in Boston and the East Coast, also on the West Coast, as well as in Europe and in Canada, also in South Africa. There's so many uh, people are asking questions and comment and uh, send us their um, appreciation and uh, writing amazing reviews about us and they love our education programs. This is so exciting. So definitely I highly encourage you to donate uh, with your donations. We will continue with our educational programs and everything that we do that you like so much. And also don't forget that we have a campaign going on uh, since um, May and uh, that campaign called Empowerment Against Cancer. And Empowerment Against Cancer is an international campaign aiming to empower cancer patients against their disease. So read more about that on our website, download your sign, write the name of the cancer patient that you want to support and take a picture and send it to us. You can also donate uh, instead. So you can uh, donate on the behalf of them or for them. It will be greatly appreciated so that we can actually really empower cancer patients, helping them not feeling victimized by their disease. This is so important so that cancer patients can work together with their medical team for more efficient, more targeted cures for their disease. So again, called Empowerment Against Cancer. Please, on every tweets that you do, or writing every notes about us, use the hashtag Cancer Simplified. Thank you so much, and I see you in the next episode. Take care.